Samantha wrote me a, a note on one of my birthdays. <laughs> I couldn't follow her advice very well. I could never golf her never that well. Hope you golf well too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. I think we all struggle with that. <laughs> that's sweet. Uh, <coughs> but here's my high school graduation class, John. Mm -hmm. Right there. Oh, there you are. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Dapper man. <laughs> I, I was class president for four years. Wow. And when I got to be a senior, I said, it's somebody else's turn. So we picked Mike Richards. <laughs> 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 yeah, for four years, I, they elected me class president. <clears throat> and... Uh, It's interesting too because this is a this is a fairly small class and yeah it is twenty five souls and and my graduating class was close to a hundred yeah and that's considered small yeah <laughs> yes it is yeah you're right <laughs> yeah I know it but uh, at one time in grade school we had forty kids in the class and uh, these were all the this here kid up here, I always remember him. He died in a car accident north of a wine there. The car plunged into a ditch and killed him. This is my cousin, Bill Reen, my mm -hmm. first cousin. You know, you heard me talk about the Reens. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was the smallest kid in the class. He was always Bob Harn. Very small. This guy here and I still keep in touch to this day, Dick Halsey. He's, he was over in, um, oh, the town on the way to L.A. I can't think of it. Oh, I forget it. Now. From here? Yeah. From here to L.A.? Yeah. Uh, it's in California. Okay. Okay. Can't think of it now. But... I suppose most of these kids are gone now. I don't know. Hmm. Can you get a picture of that? Yep, it's coming in really nice. Mm -hmm. I was trying to see the uh, spelling of the ring there. Yep. The rings. -E yeah. Yep. Wow. But that's the class right there. And on our senior prom night, me and Don Hankin, Shirley Lindstrom, who was the other gal? I'm trying to think who it was. But after our senior prom, we all jumped in a car and went to Waterloo and went dancing <laughs> 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 at the, uh, there was four of us. So who was the other guy? Me, Don Hankin, Shirley Lindstrom. Oh, Virginia Becker. Yeah, Virginia, she was really a nice kid, Virginia Becker. But we all went dancing over in Waterloo, which was 40 miles away. And yeah. That's the way we spent our senior <laughs> prom night. <laughs> I, I'm sure Waterloo was, was a fairly large town compared oh, to all was, mine. Yeah, I mean, was. even back then. Yeah, it was about a town of... Uh, 70,000 people, and you know, yeah. it was a big town. John Deere Tractor yep. Works, so that was the biggest employer in Waterloo. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll never, never yeah, it was forget. Virginia Becker, Shirley Lindstrom, uh, me, and Don Hankin. And that was our senior prom outing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John Deere bought that factory back in 1918. Yeah. For two million cash. Isn't that something? Back in 1918. 1918 huh? It still blows me away. That's, yeah. That's quite the payment. 
And I think uh, it at one time it had the reputation of being the largest tractor manufacturing facility in the world. Uh, probably. At one time. And uh, their famous tractor, they used to call it the Waterloo Boy. The water, Waterloo Boy. <laughs> the yeah. Waterloo Boy. Yeah. <laughs> That's who you're with, isn't it, John? John yeah. Deere. Yeah, fine company. As a matter of fact, a lot of people in Owine worked at John Deere's. Oh, sure. And uh, yeah. they would have a bus uh, that would uh, take them over hmm. for each shift. And uh, that bus would fill up. There'd be about 30, 40 guys on that bus every day that would go to uh, work at John Deere's in Waterloo. And uh, they had, uh, that was a big employment uh, source for Owain at that time. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yep. But I always remember us going over to Waterloo after our prom there. And Don and me and Shirley and Virginia Becker. See, I told you you were the troublemaker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I was always concerned. Nothing, that... nothing good happens in Waterloo. Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, our two priests there, Father O'Hagan, he was a pastor and wine from 36 to about 52 something like that and this guy here father knox uh, he was a good guy we always liked him he always taught the high school religion class every day and uh, we had a our, our high school was about 150 kids mm -hmm. that's probably what your graduation class was but our whole high school was 150. <laughs> We were a little bit, I think we were a little bit smaller than that. I think, uh, I think my graduating class was about 125 or so. Was it really? I think it was over 100 actually. Yeah, I'm now sure that I think it probably about. was because, you know. Well, you... it was a really small school though. It, it was, it was definitely not a large high school well, by any yeah, means. Yeah, what was the name of your school? I remember going to your, uh. Uh, graduation service yeah, there. It was University High School. U U U U High. U High. U, U, U High is what they call it. it. I still remember so it that. was a it was a what they call a laboratory school for the for the for, university for there. the university Illinois State University. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. Well, it'd be interesting to know. I know this guy's still living because we still keep in touch, Dick Halsey, and but the rest of them, I don't know. I'm sure they're about all gone. Mm hmm. Hard to say. So you met, when did you meet Grandma? Uh, I met her when I was going to Creighton. In college? Yeah. So you were both going to college? No, she going wasn't to going to college. Uh, she was a working gal. She didn't go to college. Okay. And, uh, but she lived in a, in a residence hall run by Creighton. Okay. Creighton Hall, they called it. And what it was, it was a, uh, a residence hall for uh, working girls of uh, Omaha. Okay. Yeah. And uh, she lived there. The, and it was made up of a, a lot of the gals that graduated from Creighton even lived there, you know, if they weren't married or something like that, because it was close to downtown. They could walk to their jobs and walk back mm. and forth. And so it was very handy. And it was one, run real well. They had a chapel there and they had their meals there. And everything, and it was a it was a real nice uh, lodging place for working girls in Omaha. Mm -hmm. So, what do you remember about her? Do you remember the first time you met her? Yeah, I met her at a dance. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then, how how did you meet her specifically? Did, what do you mean specifically? Well, did you go up to her and yeah. say, hey, I'm this fancy businessman <laughs> yeah, from yeah. Hawaii? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that was, this humdum guy from Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You ought to get to know me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'd have a great and wonderful life if you hooked up with me. <laughs> well, I think the proof no, is in the pudding. No, she... Um, that's the way we met, and and, uh, and she had a lot of friends there. Uh, those girls were always a close knit bunch of girls at Creighton Hall, and they were all nice kids. And and um, 
those the there were college graduates and high school graduates. I mean, you know, just the the girls that worked in the offices of downtown Omaha. Now, like uh, my wife worked at the Omaha Athletic Club in the offices there, mm -hmm. and the Omaha Athletic Club was an association of uh, kind of for the businessmen of uh, old wine, business and professional men, just had a club there and uh, it was a place for them to gather and have their parties and their dinners and you know all that sort of thing. And that's kind of the way that was. Do you want to see my yearbooks from Creighton? Or? Sure. <laughs> I'll see if I can get them out there. Well, or is there any other? Um, maybe we can we can talk for a little bit longer and then take okay. another break. Yeah. Okay. Um, sure. But I'll put these back. So sure. Or here, I'll, always. I always keep them. Or or you can keep them there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll hold. I'll hold on to them okay. for you. Uh, all right. Oh boy. Are you gonna go back to your chair? Yeah. Okay. That's my comfy chair. Boy, I gotta have someone come up and remove some of these coffee stains and someone from this carpet. But we, uh, you know, we had a good life, and uh, and four nice kids, great grandchildren. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you worked uh, during that time. Uh, well, you worked for was it Honeywell at one point? No, I never worked for Honeywell. Okay, but I tell you, the jobs I had, I'll, I'll kind of name them. <clears throat> yeah, like in high school, um, I worked at Carl Mike's grocery store, and I delivered groceries. In those days, the grocery stores, the housewife would call in her order to the store, and the store clerks would put it together and so on in a box and so on, what they wanted. And then I would load the boxes into a pickup truck and, and deliver the groceries around town. Mm -hmm. And it, this store had a big customer base. And it, it was just, uh, it was a, it was, Quite a job just delivering those groceries, and then Saturday, my God, I wouldn't get out of the place till about midnight. The darn farmers would bring their eggs to town uh, to uh, turn in their eggs, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I'd have to candle all those eggs to be sure they were all right, you know. <laughs> and, and then the farmers would take off and go to the theater. It was bank night in Old Wine at the Old Wine Theater. And then after the show let out, about 10, 30, 11 o'clock, they'd come back to the store and buy their groceries and use their egg money for what the eggs were to apply against their grocery prices. And I'd be taking the eggs uh, about 10, 30, 11 o'clock down to the, to the hatchery in Owine in the pickup truck because we didn't need all those eggs. <laughs> wow. And I wouldn't get out of there until about midnight <laughs> on a Saturday night. But that was my high school job uh, when I uh, was going to high school, wow. working at Carl Mike's uh, grocery store. And then, of course, before that, I delivered newspapers. Yeah. I had a paper roll. And um, that was uh, my, my first income right there, uh, just delivering newspapers. And there were a lot of nice people there. They'd be good to get Christmas. At, you won a, about forty cents for the paper for a week, and and at Christmas time they'd hand you a dollar and say keep the change and things like that. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> they were good. And then um, um, after high school, I went to work on the railroad. That's where I worked in the railroad storeroom, mm -hmm. fixing the ice up and so on. And then. Um, uh, I worked on that job until I was drafted into the Army on April 4th, 1945. And I was drafted in the Army at Fort Snelling, Minnesota, 
and uh, it was the biggest blizzard they ever had there. And God, we were walking around in snow <laughs> to our rears, and I had to, I was on KP duty the first day in my ar in the army, and had to get up at five o'clock in the morning to get over to that mess hall, and boy, you had to tromp through snow and everything. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I, I did that, and then they put us on a troop train, yeah, a troop train down to Jefferson Barracks, Missouri, and we got some issues, more issues of clothing and shoes and boots and all that sort of thing, and then they put us on a troop train down to uh, Camp Livington, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And I always remember, as the train pulled into Little Rock, Arkansas that night, that afternoon. Uh, the paper boys were all out on the platform there as a train pulled into town with a big headline there, Roosevelt died, Roosevelt dead. Uh -huh. That's, he died on April 12th, 1945 in Warm Springs, Georgia. And they were selling, everybody was jumping off the train running and buying a paper, you know, and to read about it. And so he died uh, on April April 12, 1945, and it was a Thursday, because the next day was Friday the 13th, and that's when we landed in Camp Livingston, Louisiana, to begin our basic training. <laughs> On Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. It couldn't be a better day. <laughs> but I, I enjoyed that basic training. Uh, it was tough, and uh, you were trained in everything, and big, long hikes, you know, God... Uh, you had to do a 15-mile hike uh, toward the end of it, and uh, we we did it all, and I felt good all through my basic training. And then after the basic training was when I returned to Owain on the delay en route to Camp Rock, <coughs> Alabama. And then the rest of well, we went through that going up across the country to. Mm -hmm. Camp of Air and overseas to Japan and so on. <laughs> but then you got, so then eventually you go into college and you get your degree and you started out at the one, the one place there you said and then you got yeah, another Peter job. Yeah, Peter Kiewit's Sons Company. Yeah. I worked, that was my first job was at Peter Kiewit's, which is a big na nationwide construction company. It was a good company, no question about it. And I probably could have stayed there, but your business function was so narrow. I mean, you were just doing office work all the time at Peter Kiewitz. And I wanted something a little broader where you were conducting business and doing business in mm -hmm. the community and so on. So I left that and went to work for Anderson Equipment Company. What? And they sold big construction equipment, uh, cranes and, and uh, air compressors and road levelers and Oh, just all kinds of construction equipment, and I enjoyed that. I stayed there. As a matter of fact, my boss there, I always kind of considered him my mentor mm. in business. He taught me so much because so much of that equipment was uh, sold through rental contracts and so on. In other words, a contractor would come in and he'd need an air compressor or, or uh, a road machine or something for um, for a particular job, and we would sell. We would call it a rental lease. We would rent the thing to him, and if he decided to buy it, we would take the rental payments and apply it to the purchase price. And we sold a lot of equipment that way, and uh, that was a that was a good way of doing it. And they had a big rental business big rental business. And, uh, you know, we would uh, have to watch those contractors. A lot of those guys were just small one-man operations and so yeah. on, you know, and everything. But it was a good business. What was, uh, so you said you consider that boss one of your mentors. What was, was there something that you still remember to this day that, you, you know, you, you feel like you carry forward? Yeah, I uh, do. No, he, he was just, he was, he was not only a boss, he was a good friend. Wayne Marley was his name. Wayne Marley. And he came from a little town in western Iowa. He was older than I was. He was had his family already grown up practically. 
and uh, he came from a little town called Onawa, Iowa, O-N-A-W-A, -A. and uh, <clears throat> he worked his entire life in construction, and as a matter of fact, he <clears throat> was a manager of a, of a concrete company almost, Ready Mix Concrete, mm -hmm. and they sold practically all the concrete that was ever used in the town of Omaha in those days. And they, they had probably 40 or 50 big rigs that delivered the concrete and those drums, you know, and so on. And he, he was really good in that stuff. And then he went to work for this Anderson Equipment Company, and he's the one that hired me there. And he just taught me so much about the rental business and running construction machinery and how to, and, and interest rates too. We, uh, we always charged interest rates on the rental of that. If they wanted to buy it, the interest rates would come into play, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he just taught me so much about business, Wayne Marley. And I always kind of considered him my mentor. That, train me in, uh, in business contracts and conditional sales contracts and rental agreements and, and uh, things of that nature. And so how long were you with Anderson? Six years. Six years. <laughs> and then I went to work for Westinghouse. The Westinghouse. That was the yeah. company I was trying to think of. Because <laughs> yeah. okay. yeah. you spent a lot of time with Westinghouse, yeah, about right? 30 years. Yeah, that's what I yeah, thought. That's and you retired from Westinghouse? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, when I when I joined Westinghouse, it was in 1960, and uh, we had branches uh, at that time all over the country. But the branches I was responsible for, uh, Westinghouse and Omaha, was in Omaha, Des Moines, and Sioux City. Mm -hmm. And so I would have to travel to those places. And uh, I was in Omaha just four years with Westinghouse when I was transferred to Chicago. And then I became a regional manager. And so when you were a branch manager with Westinghouse, was that, was there, because I, I always thought like Westinghouse um, sold their products in other stores and places. Yeah, well, you're probably talking more of the appliance line and so on. Okay. And this was the, the construction side of it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't, we didn't have anything to do with appliances. The appliances were sold in our same building and everything in Omaha and Chicago, but ours was a separate uh, site, and it was mainly construction, okay. and industry, and utilities. Okay, That's what okay. we sold, utility equipment like See, I didn't even realize they had a construction oh, site. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was big, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was the main major part of their business. Everybody kind of remembers Westinghouse from the appliance side of it, where Betty Furness uh, right. was uh, advertising on TV. And well, when I, when I worked at Kmart, I remember we had their products on the shelf, you yeah, know, so that's, yeah. that's a, the, immediately that that's the association yeah. that I get, right? You know, I always remember the... the uh, the Westinghouse ad where Betty Furness was demonstrating Westinghouse products and she walked up to the refrigerator door to, to open it and she couldn't get it open. She's on camera there <laughs> telling the door and <laughs> That's funny. She looked at her and the door wouldn't open. That was a real ad. <laughs> Live stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you know, you guys had the best sealed refrigerators on the market. <laughs> yeah, that proved that. If it didn't prove anything else, it proved that. <laughs> the best sealed refrigerator. We beat GE. <laughs> well, that was so funny when oh. that happened. Everybody laughed about that. So you were a regional, regional manager in Chicago. Yeah. And, and that covered... Uh, we had district offices in Indianapolis, uh -huh. Chicago, uh, Milwaukee, St. Paul, and Omaha. Wow. That was our okay. region. Uh, those, those were our five district offices. And I feel like you were in Chicago for a while. Yeah, 14 years. Okay. And then I was transferred to New York. New York was in such terrible shape out there. I God. Did. 
I didn't know you, you guys, so did all, did, did you, Grandma, and the kids, did everyone move out? Well, the kids were out of the house by then. Ah. So just Grandma and I moved to New York. Okay. I don't know, did you ever visit us in New York? Not New York, but I believe you were in Pittsburgh at one point. Yeah, you were you visited Pittsburgh. I do remember well, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Well, anyway, we were in New York for four years. Okay. And our district offices in New York were in New York and Boston. Hartford and um, Philadelphia and Baltimore. And so, what were you? Were you still a regional manager yeah. for that? Yeah. Okay, but then they just moved you kind from of, Midwest to East Coast. Yeah, it wasn't a promotion really. Kind of a, uh, as far as job importance goes, it was kind of a lateral move. But there okay. was so much trouble out there. They just were in terrible shape out there, mm. and they just didn't have any. Well, when I went there, I had, I had to get rid of everybody that worked for me. The, nobody was had any smarts at all, hardly. Uh -huh. And I had to hire outsiders to come to, to work in. Well, in, well, when the guy in Baltimore died, uh, a very young guy in his 40s, and he died, and I hired Bill Hartnett, and Bill Hartnett was a great hire. He worked for me there for... Oh, all the time I was there, and then we had an old timer up in Boston, Mel Toddy Man. He was a he was a good manager. He was he's okay. As a matter of fact, they tried to get him to move to New York before they transferred me there. They thought they would take a local guy, and he turned it down. And then we had a manager in Syracuse, New York, and then of course one in Philadelphia too, but. Um, Anyway, I was, in, I was in New York for four years, and then I was moved to Pittsburgh, and then had the whole country then. Over saw the whole the country, Puerto Rico and Hawaii, yeah. And what were you then at that point? I was a national manager. National manager yeah. was the title? Yeah, national financial manager. National financial manager, yeah. and that was for their construction side? Yeah. Okay. And that was the construction side of it. <laughs> And so you were on the finance side this whole time? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. National financial manager. And, uh, yeah, we had Puerto Rico and all the United States and Hawaii, too. And, so and did you ask anybody, why is this office in Pittsburgh? Why is it in Hawaii? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should have. Yeah. <laughs> I in fact, to to <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do yeah, as the yeah, new I mean, national manager, yeah, we're, we're going to move to Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, we're going to make some drastic moves here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, I uh, retired from Pittsburgh and then we moved out to Arizona. How long were you in Pittsburgh then? Eight years. Eight years? Yeah. Okay. And was that all under the same position? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole eight years in the same position. Mm -hmm. And then, and then after you retired from there, you came down to sunny Arizona. Sunny Arizona, yeah, I got a sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> I I have a very young memory, uh, which is probably mostly driven by by a picture that I remember. You know, somebody took of us at yeah. your at your house in Pittsburgh. But yeah. I just I remember. Uh, we got some pictures of it. I. I, I remember very, very little of it. Yeah, yeah. I know. Well, you guys were just babies then. Yeah. I know. And uh, your folks would bring us out, bring you out there. And we had a, we lived in an area that was, a, it was a nice area. It was kind of a condominium type of area. And we had a townhouse in it. Mm. And uh, it was a two-four townhouse. And, and uh, we had a, pool there and tennis courts and everything, you know, and, and we would take you guys, you were just babies then, take you down to the pool and all the neighbors would come and play with you and everything in the pool and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, it, was a, it was a good place to live, I enjoyed our, I, I liked every place we ever lived, yeah. every place. New York, we had a nice place there. Where at in New York were you? Well, we were in Bergen County, New Jersey. 
okay. which was across the river, the Hudson River. And then it was uh, Bergen County was the first county and we lived. Uh, I was about 29 miles from the office. Then. Our office was over uh, in, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of the community. It was just about four and a half miles off of Manhattan Island. Okay. And, and, was it in Brooklyn? Maspeth yeah. was the name of the community. M A S P E T H, Maspeth. Huh. And it was just a suburban uh, area for New York, a suburban community. How long of a commute was that? Uh, 29 miles from my house to the office. Do you remember how long it, like, was it two hours to get in? No, or, no? it wasn't quite that bad. As That's a matter of fact, the guy that worked for me in New York, uh, he had a company car. At my level, didn't have company cars anymore, but he had to be in touch with the market and every place. So he had a company car and he'd come by and pick me up every day <laughs> and uh, bring me home every night. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> so that was a good deal. And um, But we, um, we drove back and forth and then we managed Puerto Rico out of New York too. Uh, huh. Yeah. We, Puerto Rico was a pretty active market for us down there. We had four branches in Puerto Rico. Wow. Yeah. Huh. One in San Juan and Arecibo. Um, God, I can't think of the other ones. But did but outside of Puerto Rico, did Westinghouse operate outside of the U.S. much? Uh, well, back then. Yeah, it did. Uh, I mean, I, there was we had what we had is a different division. Okay. It was called <laughs> West. I have much connection with it. Okay. Our ours was apparatus and supplies, and <laughs> we uh, we were a separate division. Westinghouse had a lot of divisions in those days. Like we didn't sell appliances in our division. But we could buy appliances at a, you know, employee discount and all that. Yeah. But uh, we, we didn't sell appliances. And that was a separate division all by itself. You never bought the refrigerator from them, huh? Well, I did. <laughs> we could you get the door and, open? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah with, with a sledgehammer, I could open the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I built a, we built a home in Omaha. Um, and as a matter of fact, we visited it last year. Was that before you moved to Chi yeah, Chicago? Yeah, before then? we moved okay. to Chicago. But I built a, we built a home in Omaha, and we put all Westinghouse products in the home. Uh, we had a Westinghouse furnace. It was an electric furnace, and we had Westinghouse laundry equipment. Uh, we had Westinghouse uh, kitchen appliances, refrigerator, um, stove top, and garbage disposal. Had it all. Oh, it was a solid Westinghouse <laughs> built in Omaha. <laughs> Did it last? We lived, yeah. Well, we only lived there four years before it was transferred to mm -hmm. Chicago. But it was working when we left. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, we went through that house last summer. <laughs> I don't know. It's the house is still there. Yeah, the house is still there, and uh, we drove by. Your mom was with us, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think she was with us, and we drove by the house and uh, that I had built there, that we had built there, and the lady was standing outside. And we just <laughs> stopped there and said, "Say, you know, we used to own this house here." And uh, I said, it'd be interesting to take a look at it. And she said, well, would you like to take a look? And I said, well, yeah, we would. So, well, come on in. So we went in and went through the whole house. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I don't even recall what I remember whether the appliances were still there or not. <laughs> but, you know, that's back in the Well, the refrigerator was still there. They <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, well, they couldn't get the door open. <laughs> So well, we, your mom was with us, yeah, we, yeah, and we went through that house. Did you know, did she say how long that she had lived there? This lady? Yeah. Um, I don't recall that. 
Okay. When we asked her how long she was there. Yeah. But most of the neighbors are pretty much gone. And yeah. And um, they built a new Catholic church right just within a block from that house. Hmm. And we would, as a matter of fact, that was in the plan when we left there that they, uh, that, that church was going to be built there on that um. property in a school, Catholic school, <coughs> right there. That's where the kids would have gone to school and everything if we'd have stayed in Omaha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But, uh, this lady invited us in and said we could put it all <laughs> over, and I looked up there and saw the shower I used to shower in. <laughs> everything. It was a four bed, it was a split level home. <clears throat> Four bedrooms with, uh, and then we had the basement all tiled down there. And I always remember when Kennedy was shot, you know, in 1963. Um, we kind of used that basement room as a family room. And we had it all fixed up real nice, nice tile on the floor, and curtains in the windows, and everything. And that's where we would spend a lot of our time. In the basement, we had our television down there and so on. And I remember watching all the Kennedy assassination ceremonies and activities down there in that basement. And the basement was raised quite high off the ground. And it had big, high windows in it and so on. So it had a lot of daylight in it and everything. It wasn't your typical shut-in basement or anything. Yeah. It was a nice home. That's where we had planned to raise the family until we were transferred to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a nice home in Chicago too. It sounds like it. Yeah, yeah I better tell you about that. That's interesting too. You know, um, mom, your grandmother, just a country girl, you know, and when we were transferred to Chicago, the company said that I could bring her on two different weekends to select the home and buy it. <coughs> and uh, so uh, anyway, I had her come in and I met her at O'Hare to pick her up and so on. It's the first time she'd ever been to Chicago. <laughs> and uh, and uh, picked her up. and. We must have looked at about 20, 25 different homes around Chicago there. <laughs> and she was so disgusted, she saw nothing that she liked at all. This was wrong, and that was wrong, and oh God. And, and I put her on the plane to go back to Omaha on that Sunday night, and she said, I don't even want to make this move, I don't care if we ever move. <laughs> She was so disgusted with Chicago, and uh, so anyway, I I said, okay, well, we'll we'll do something, and I just put her on the plane to go back to Omaha, <laughs> and uh, Leo was babysitting all the kids, Mary and John and Pat and Tom, mm -hmm. and Leila still keeps in touch with this day. But anyway, she had all the kids while we while she was in Chicago there looking at home. And so the next day, the next following week, I was traveling out around Arlington Heights there. And um, we uh, came across Ivy Hill where <coughs> we were living. And um, uh, walked, went through there and it looked like a nice, neat, clean neighborhood and everything. And, and they had all their model homes up for sale. And um, geez, I thought this, these look pretty nice. And we saw this two-story one, uh, four bedroom, two and a half, went through it and everything. And I thought, geez, this would really fill our bill. And uh, anyway, I. I was looking at it and I was really impressed with the house. And I said to the sales guy, I said, you know, I says, you didn't have any storm windows on it. I, I said, you know, if, if you put some storm windows on this house, I'd buy this place. 
He said, well, I'll do that. So I said, okay, I'll buy it. <laughs> and Grandma didn't even see the house at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to keep my fingers really crossed. Yeah. Said, she never, and I said, well, I'll buy the place. You put the storm windows on it. And they said, yeah, we'll do that. And so I went back and I signed all the paperwork on it and everything. And and boy, I had to keep my fingers really crossed when I drove up to that with her, <laughs> whether she would like that place or not. And but what was her reaction? Boy, she liked it right off the bat. She liked it. But you know, it was a, it was a four bedroom, two story home, with uh -huh. two and a half baths, everything we needed on a, a nice lot. And uh, so I just bought that house right on the spot. <laughs> But I really was kind of concerned. I thought, oh, it'll be hell to pay if she doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but that was our story of moving to Chicago. That's and funny. That, I mean, that kind of sounds like me moving to the Quad Cities with, yeah. with Katie. That was, uh, that was a very precarious move because we loved the area we were in. Yeah, and sure. Katie hadn't Katie hadn't experienced as many moves as I as I she had growing up. Yeah. So yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. You never know. You have to make some of those quick decisions. Yeah. You never know whether it's going to pan out or not, John. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. But anyway, that's where we spent 14 years, and mm -hmm. we liked the home. It was. A nice home, and, and in those days, right behind it. Well, you've been to that place, haven't you? Or were you? I've been. I've been well, to Arlington. Yeah, the kids were growing up, so you weren't around. Then. I've I've been to Arlington Heights, though. I mean, you know, I we we have family that lives in the area, and yeah. then I want to say that mom and dad have driven by their old houses. Yeah. You know, at some point, but I just I was probably so young. I don't know if yeah, I remember. Yeah, you probably were. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, right behind us was a was a vacant field, and uh, it was a cornfield. The farmer that farmed that land just put in a corn crop right behind us there. Wow! And uh, so we'd go out and pick some corn when we wanted them. Or, and I always <laughs> remember Tom. Tom. Uh, Tom always liked to plant things and watch them grow, you know. And uh, he, um, when you he got some pumpkin seeds and he planted them right beside that corn crop, and God, the pumpkins that came out of there! Great big pumpkins! You know? <laughs> he was so proud of those pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> we had jack-o'-lanterns that October and everything, <laughs> but he was so proud of those pumpkins, <laughs> and uh, he planted those. He, he and then Tom he planted uh, some peas and beans. He always he always liked to plant things, and as a kid like that, <laughs> and he had his peas and his beans and <laughs> everything else. You know. He was uh, he was stealing from the farmer's corn. Yeah, he sure was. He was using his ground anyway. Yeah. He was using the farmer. Then the farmer he didn't say anything. He went around it and so on when he plowed the corn. Oh, it was actually into the field. Yeah, it was into his field. It's <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, you know, six or eight feet. Not very much. Is enough all along our lot line there. Where he had but he when he was harvesting, he would have to go around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, that was something too. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. And you know, uh, Tom was never much of an athlete at all. But we had the um, uh, we had the little the little league softball games and baseball games, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and they had uniforms and everything and. And uh, one year I was an assistant coach for one of the teams, and and uh, the next year I I had to travel so much that I just said I'd work on the big money raising day. We had a big pancake feed or something to raise money to buy uniforms and bats and balls and all that sort of thing. And uh, so I just remember one night. 
they were going to say Tom wasn't much of an athlete, and they put him in right field. And one night we were up to a game there, and I'll be darned if God, some guy didn't bat a ball real high in the sky and went out into right field, <laughs> and Tom grabbed it and, <laughs> and had it out. And God, we were sitting there again, and <laughs> a little while later, and another few innings, another <laughs> ball comes right out into right field there. <laughs> and I thought, dude, he'll drop that one sure as hell. <laughs> and I mean, he didn't drop, he catch that one. He caught two fly by wow. one night. God, he was considered a big hero in the game. <laughs> Because he didn't have much athletic ability. Well, and but he grabbed two fly balls anyway. <laughs> I I tell you what, when, when you're not when you're not a natural athlete, yeah. and you know it's one of your earlier games, and that ball is coming flying up, and you're in the outfield. Yeah. Uh, there are that that is an incredibly nervous yes, and yes. Uh, very just strange yeah, experience you're as a panic kid. Stricken. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know it. I mean, it's it's kind of like the movie Sandlot. You just put your glove up and pray, and <laughs> just the ball falls. hope the ball comes there. And then you hang on to it. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Well, that's what that was, and I couldn't get over that because you know he had no athletic prowess hardly at all. Tom did, but God, that night he grabbed two fly balls. <laughs> there you go. Right to him. I couldn't get over that. Oh, thank God, he's got talent I didn't realize he had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was funny. Good times. <laughs> but that garden he planted right by the cornfield there. He did real well on that. The neighbors would all wonder how in the world he... And he'd come home and work in it, too. You know, he'd come out of school and come down and be weeding it and nurturing it along. Oh, and so. and there, there you go. <laughs> That's, that's, impre that's impressive. Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> so, uh, so th thinking back to all these years and these experiences, if uh, if somebody else is going to come along and watch this, maybe maybe when one of one of my kids grows up, or yeah. you know, my sisters, or any of them, what are what are you know, three things or a couple things off the top of your head that you you would want to pass along to somebody else? Oh, well, that's an interesting question. It could be some things that you learn, maybe something to help them in their in their career or what, wherever you want to go with it. What are what are three things you want to pass down? Well, uh, I don't know. There's uh, gee, there's. There are just so many things, and uh, you know, I, I, I just felt like I, I, I felt like I had to work for about everything I had obtained or worked at. You know, I just felt like I had to work at it. Uh, and nothing seemed to come all that easy. Um, uh, and I remember uh, when I was a junior in high school, the American Legion had these Boy State programs. I don't know if you ever heard of those or not. I don't know. Boy State programs? Yeah. And what it amounted to was is that every Legion post in the, in the, in the state could pick a couple of boys to come to a boy state program and they would set up a mock state government. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, that was an interesting experience to me. Uh, I was selected along with, I took the graduation picture, in, but two mm -hmm. kids out of our class and two kids from Old Wine High. Uh, to go to Boy State, which was sponsored by the State American Legion organization. Mm -hmm. And they held this at um, Grinnell College in Iowa. And Grinnell was a, 
is one of the prestigious private schools in Iowa. And it catered to a lot of Eastern kids from the East who would come and enroll at Grinnell and get their liberal arts degrees and so on like that. And uh, we, uh, Mike Richards and I, Mike Richards was a class president and a senior, yeah. were selected from our school to go to Boy State. And so we went down to Boy State. The local Legion Club drove us down there to Grinnell. And uh, we just had an interesting week there of setting up a, they divided us all into this to uh, townships and counties and districts, you know, and so on. We had to elect each other to various positions and so <laughs> on. And a kid from uh, Dubuque, Lawrence Academy in Dubuque, Don Brightback was his name, uh, was a selected governor for the whole community there. Yeah. There were all 800, I think there were about six or 800 of us kids from around the state. And he was selected as uh, uh, governor of the whole thing. And oddly enough, Grandma and I were coming back from Owine to Chicago on one of our trips uh, out that way. Mm -hmm. And we decided to stay overnight in Dubuque. And uh, so we stayed overnight and I picked up the morning paper the next day and as Don Brightback, they were celebrating his funeral that day and he died at the age of 75. Hmm. And that brought back so many memories when I saw that name because I knew him and, and uh, he was a uh, elected state governor for Boy State <laughs> at that thing and it just brought back a lot of memories to think well now he died and he was 75 years old and he was a lawyer. He went to the University of Iowa to law school and uh, practiced law in Dubuque. Came back to Dubuque and practiced law. Hmm. And here I, I guess I could have gone to his funeral if I wanted to do that day. <laughs> You know, kind of an interesting sidelight because it brought back so many memories of him because yeah. I knew him at Boy State. And just, you know, just different things like that to stick with you. And he was just 75 years old and died. But got to think that was 15 years ago. <laughs> well, I'm 90, it will be 92 pretty soon. I didn't think I'd ever live this long, John. <laughs> I really didn't. I didn't think I'd ever make it to 90. Now, Mame and Joe, my Aunt Mame and Uncle Joe, my Aunt Mame lived to be 106. That's what I thought. Cause she I had a sister that also lived to be 106. Because I thought they were both, I thought they were both still alive at one point when, when I was. Oh yeah. 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 You should, they remember. Yeah. The, I've got pictures in there. Yeah. If I could dig them out, of you and and, and uh, it was Mame's 100th birthday. That's we right. We couldn't make it out. We were in Pennsylvania, but. Mary bought you guys and you were just babies there. Yeah. And there's pictures of her holding you guys, <laughs> one of the, the two of you or something, you know, at her 100th birthday. Yeah, I, rem I remember that. And I think I remember going out there for one of their funerals. I don't know if yeah, we went you out. Yeah, probably did. Yeah, I don't know we, if we went out for both, but mm -hmm. for sure one of well, them. Joe died in... Um, Joe died, he did live to be 98, and um, see, he was born in 1882. So then he would have died right before I was born. Probably would have. That yeah. would have been Lauren. Lauren was born in 1980. 1980? Yeah, and then I was 82. Oh, yeah. Well, Joe died in 1988, I think, yeah. Yeah. 
So Warren was living. And Mame died in uh, 1980. Let's see, she lived to be 106. So she was born in. She died in 1990. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to say, I, rem I remember being pretty young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she died and she lived to be 106. So that would have made her in 1990 that she died. And when were you born? 1982. 82. Well, you were eight years old? Yeah. yeah <coughs> I remember. I can remember, yes. I remember being pretty antsy at when we, like, we went back to, I thought we went back to someone's house. And I thought I was being kind of antsy and wasn't really well behaved so I thought somebody took me on a walk and I thought it might have even been you could have done took me well, on I a remember walk at the that wake night. at the wake you guys were there and I was standing up making a few remarks about her life and everything like that and you guys were sitting back there waving at me <laughs> <laughs> as I was standing up there <laughs> yeah. You, you get it. one of the two of you were waving at me and I was <laughs> trying to be serious, you know, and making some proper remarks uh, for the scene and that was at their wake, yeah. <laughs> that sounds about right, actually. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, great line. Yeah. There's just oh. so many memories. Well, anything, anything else you want to share? I've taken up almost. I think I've taken up over two hours of your time. Well, I enjoyed it, John. It's I, nice to have you here, just as my grandson and companion for this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed it too. This has been fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry it's taken this long to oh, do this. Don't worry about it. Don't I was not as good with technology when I was 12 as I am now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were more technologically inclined than I am. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, any any uh, last oh. comments or anything else you'd like to share? I really can't think of anything. I think we covered so much. The the hip Boy, young high school. The hip young thing to do nowadays, Grandpa, is to give a shout out to someone on camera. This is what they call it. So you're supposed to look out to the camera and say, I want to say hi to... Oh, and okay, then you, you yeah. pick out some people to say hi to. Okay. <laughs> well, I just want to say hi to all of my nieces, my grandsons and granddaughters and everything. I think I have the best family in the world. I am proud of each and every one of them. And I know of no ill feelings or ill behavior that's ever occurred in any of them. I just feel like I'm the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> I think that's a great way to end it. Yeah, it is, John. It was good. Well, thank you for your time this morning, Grandpa. Well, thank was, you for coming. It was fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for All coming. right. Yeah, we just really enjoyed it.